Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch which brings you stories of resistance and struggles against capitalist exploitation and state repression. In this episode, we take a look at the police violence against students of India's Jawaharlal Nehru University who are protesting a proposed fee hike and regressive restrictions on student activities. We also look into the hunger strike by Palestinian political prisoners in Israeli jails and the march by trade unions in South Africa against the second annual investment conference in Johannesburg. We begin with the students' protest against massive fee hike at the New Delhi-based Jawaharlal Nehru University which has been going on for the past 15 days. On November 11, thousands of students led by the JNU Students' Union marched to the auditorium of the All India Council for Technical Education in New Delhi, where the convocation for the university's graduating students was held. With the slogan, No Convocation Without Affordable Education, the students demanded the withdrawal of a draft hostel manual that imposes exorbitant hike in hostel fees along with regressive measures like imposition of dress codes and hostel curfews. Hostel fees has been increased tenfold from the existing 2,700 rupees, which is approximately 38 US dollars, to overwhooping 30,100 rupees, which is nearly 426 dollars per annum. This is excluding monthly mess bills and the newly introduced electricity and water charges. The protest began in the last week of October in opposition to the restrictions on access to public spaces on the campus like the famous Parthasarathi Rock area, the early library closing time and the illegal lockdown of the Students' Union office. As the administration arbitrarily passed the controversial draft hostel manual without any student consultation, the movement expanded to include the demand to revoke the hostel draft manual and the fee hike. At today's protest, students were attacked by police and paramilitary forces who used bait and charge and water cannons against them. However, despite the police violence, the students refused to go back and were successful in submitting the memorandum of demands to the Minister of Human Resource Development, Ramesh Pokhriyal. Earlier attempts by JNU students to hold dialogue with the university administration failed as the university vice chancellor and other officials refused to meet the students. The minister has given an assurance that the ministry will arrange a meeting with the administration on the issue of fee hike and other measures. My name is Sanskriti Sharma. I am from Madhya Pradesh, Shopur Jile. I am from Shopur Jile. I am a only student who has been able to reach the JNU in 50 years. ठीक है सबसे बड़ी बात और सिर्फ मैं इसलिए आई हूँ यहाँ पे क्योंकि मेरी फीस नहीं है नहीं तो मैं ड्यू जा सकती थी ड्यू देने लायक मेरे मम्मी पापा के पास पैसे नहीं है ठीक है और बात ये है कि यहाँ पे एजुकेशन पैसे से नहीं तोला जाता बाहर जितनी भी जगह एजुकेशन मिल रहा है वहाँ इतनी मोटी मोटी फीस ली जाती है क्या वहाँ का एजुकेशन लेवल जे की तरह है और जे के एजुकेशन लेवल की जगह अगर हम बात करते हैं तो यहाँ दोनों तरफ देखना सिखाते हैं यहाँ पर सिर्फ एक तरफ की बात नहीं होती है कि आपको जो पढ़ाया जा रहा है आप सिर्फ वही पढ़ो यहाँ क्वेश्चन करना सिखाया जाता है आपको तो एजुकेशन आपको पैसे से नहीं है और दूसरी बात जब ये बोल रहे कि हमारे पास रेवेन्यू नहीं आ रहा है तो क्या क्या जेएनयू मशीन है जेएनयू एक फैक्ट्री है जहाँ पे पैसे उत्पाद करेंगे आप पैसे के लिए नहीं बनाया जेएनयू मेरे मेरे दिमाग में तीन महीने हो गए मुझे यहाँ आए हुए एक बार भी मेंटल प्रेशर नहीं आया है कि मेरे को पैसे मंगाने अपने घर से कि तीन यहाँ पे आठ हजार रुपए देने लेकिन आज से मैं ये सोचने लगी हूँ जब से इनने फीस आई की बात की कि मैं अपने मम्मी पापा को क्या बोलूंगी वो कहाँ से पैसे देंगे यहाँ पे मेरे लिए दस हजार रुपए दस हजार होंगे ना आठ हजार सात हजार इनकी फीस ऊपर से मेरे भी खर्चे होंगे किताब कॉपी होंगे पेन के सब चीज के खर्चे होंगे कि नहीं होंगे वो कहाँ से देंगे वो मेरे मेंटल प्रेशर में अगर आप पढ़ाई कर सकते हैं तो वही पढ़ाई करेंगे जो बाहर की एम की सारी यूनिवर्सिटियाँ करा रही हैं आपको किस किस लेवल की पढ़ाई है जो हमारे खुद एच मिनिस्टर बोले थे कि हमारी नब्बे प्रतिशत आज तक की जितनी भी रिसर्च है वो सब एकदम कॉपी पेस्ट टाइप की है और जे जो करता है वो काम से करता है जे जो करता है वो गुणवत्तापूर्ण करता है आपको गुणवत्ता जब मिलेगी जब आपके मानसिक तनाव नहीं होगा और ये हमें मानसिक तनाव देने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं वी JNU has long been hailed as a model of quality and affordable education with a vibrant and progressive campus politics. The JNU students note that it is JNU's low fee structure that has helped the poorest students in India to get quality education. The far-right government in India, led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has been spearheading a rapid neoliberal economic campaign in India which threatens the idea of free education to all as high fees will make university accessible only for the rich. 
In our next story, we look at three Palestinian administrative detainees who are continuing their hunger strike in Israeli prisons. The detainees are protesting their unlawful detention without charge or trial, according to the Palestinian Prisoners Commission, which reported this on Saturday, November 9. The three detainees have been identified as Ismail Ali, Musab al-Hindi, and Ahmed Zaran. Of these three detainees, Ismail Ali has been on a hunger strike for 112 days and counting. The long duration of Ali's strike has already started affecting his health adversely, as he is suffering from severe weight loss, loss of vision, and impaired mobility. Ali was arrested in January and was subsequently placed in administrative detention for six months. His detention was renewed in June, which followed Ali launching his hunger strike. Ali has been in and out of Israeli prisons for several years and has already spent a total of seven years in various jails. Musab al-Hindi, a 29-year-old, has been on strike for 49 days. He hails from the town of Tal near northern West Bank city of Nablus. He was arrested in September 2019 and put in administrative detention. Al-Hindi was also recently transferred to the hospital after his health deteriorated significantly. Ahmed Zaran has been on hunger strike for 51 days, has also seen his health worsen to a critical stage due to the long duration of his hunger strike. Zaran was detained by Israeli forces in March this year and placed in administrative detention. He was on hunger strike for over a month already when the Israeli prisoners, prison authorities agreed to release him, but they later reneged on the agreement and continued to keep him in detention, resulting in in him relaunching his strike last week, two Jordanian nationals, Heba al-Labadi and Abdul Rahman Mari, who were being held in the administrative detention in Israel, were released after nearly two months in prison, according to statements by the Jordanian and Israeli foreign ministries. Before their release, a massive campaign was organized by activists across the region to demand that the two Jordanians being held without any charge or trial be released. The Jordanian government also recalled its ambassador from Israel as a sign of protest against the detention of its citizens. Moving on to our third story, trade unions and other organizations striving for socio-economic equality in South Africa marched to the second investment summit held in the country on November 7 at Soweto campus of the University of Johannesburg. Calling the summit a bluff, the organizations condemned the austerity policies of the government and blind reliance on the Foreign Direct Investment, or FDI, for driving economic growth. The march was led by South African Federation of Trade Unions, SAFTU, and included NUMSA, the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa, the Shack Dwellers Movement, Abilali Besem Jondolo, General Industrial Workers Union of South Africa, JIUSA, the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union, AMCU, the Unemployed People's Assembly, and several other civil society organizations. Following the march, a joint memorandum addressed to the country's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, was submitted on behalf of the 50 organizations and was received by Minister of Small Business Development, Lindive Zulu. Meanwhile, the South African government has continued to follow the neoliberal policies of enforcing austerity while increasing concessions for corporates in the hope that this will incentivize investments and create jobs. However, the unions claim that the data prove otherwise, that such policies are in fact responsible for the current economic crisis. According to the unions, in order to revive the economy under the circumstances, the only way forward is to ensure a massive boost in public investment that will improve public infrastructure, provide social security, and also create new jobs, leading to an increase in domestic demand. This is all we have for this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more such stories and videos, visit our website www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you.